there's been some inexcusable moves over the course of this series, the last couple series where you have to now step back and evaluate and go, is this the guy that takes you to the next level? Yeah, and I, honestly, Juice, I am so glad you brought that up because that has been on my mind for about the last three and a half days. And, you know, it's been kicked around in Twitter and, you know, people overreacting. And I think it's more people overreacting than, than anything else, at least at least the noise that I have been seeing. But quarter of the way through the season now, how many times have we been like, why the fuck is this the lineup tonight? I feel like too many through 41 games, right? I feel like we haven't seen the true, you know, best starting nine you can put out there that this Cubs team has to offer, right? Today, today was a perfect example of this. I did a little bit of pregame recon on Twitter. I like to scroll through on the Cubs on tap account and just see what the people are saying. And as soon as today's lineup came out, there was a lot of what the fuck are you doing, Ross, is all over Twitter. All over Twitter, right? You had Hosmer in the DH again, which, again, if he's not playing first base, I don't know why he's on the roster. You had Barnhart catching it again, who just statistically, with Gomes versus Barnhart, this team is is night and day, record-wise. Yeah. Right? With Gomes, they're, they're above 500, and with Barnhart, they've only won, like, four games. You know, and I, I think some fault can be put on – a pair of people here, right? I I think you can fault Jed to a fault just because this is what Ross is given. But at the same time, sometimes you got to just say, fuck playing matchups and just play your best players and see what happens, right? Joe Madden used to talk about this all the time when he managed the Cubs and when he's managed everywhere, right? That he would just kind of throw shit at a wall and see what works Mm -hmm. because you have 162 games. You can manage to do that for a three or four game stretch. And if it doesn't work, you just hit the reset button and you try something different. I feel like Ross has yet to do that where he's just been like, you know what? We're playing like if tomorrow the lineup was Morel's going to have to play center because belly is, is hurt. But if it's Hap, Morel, and, and Say on the outfield, right? Maybe it's Wisdom at third. No, I, I shouldn't even say maybe. It's Wisdom at third. <laughs> it's Dansby at short. Unfortunately, right now, it's probably Madrigal at second just because oh, of sucks. Nico being hurt. I know. Sucks. <laughs> Mervis at first and Trey dh and Jan behind the plate. That's what I want to see tomorrow because right now, that's the best lineup you have available. Just yeah. throw shit at a wall. You already lost the series. So at this yeah, point, you might as well try trying. and you're going in on an off yeah. day too. Right. Exactly. At this point, it's just trying to get some level of momentum before you have to jump on a late night flight to Philadelphia. You get an off day and then you play three with the Phillies. Just do it. And I, I think some of that, again, Ross never had the benefit of a guy like a Joe Madden or some of these other managers in baseball who managed at different levels before being called to the big leagues. Like he was in the front office and then he was given the job and I'm not shaming anybody for that, but where does your head stand with David Ross? Is he the Vinny Del Negro's and Denny Savard and Mike Quaddies of the world? Or is he a Tom Thibodeau or a Joe Madden or, or a Joel Quenville of the Chicago sports landscape who is actually going to get you results with a team that is ready to compete because we've really only seen him one year with a team that was quote unquote competing ready. Maybe two, if you include 2021, but like when, when do we start to ask the question of, is it a talent problem on the roster or is it a managerial problem on the roster with a guy like David Ross? I'm going to answer this with a philosophy of mine. And that, that comes down to just baseball managerial opinions of mine in general, any, any team it's, if you're noticing it, it's a problem. If you're not noticing it, the guy's probably replacement level. Okay. I don't think managers anymore, maybe back like years and years ago before the, all the stats and saber metrics were, you know, a thing. I didn't think that managers, in this day and age impact much. I think that most of it is, is probably done with a computer program at this point and is done with the front office hand in hand and, and things like that. But if you're starting to notice and there's backlash about lineups outside 
of your circle, your clubhouse, like we're seeing on Twitter, then it starts to become a problem. Also, too, like, I mean, as baseball fans, and I know you do this. I've talked to our president, Tony Marchese, about this, too. We both manage with the game. I think, like, oh, I would do this if I were, you know, I'd go to this person this time. I know i got to get, you know, this much out of this pitcher or, you know, maybe this at bat is is good for this guy who's on a bench because he has an off day today. And there's times where I don't agree with what he's doing and it works. And I go, okay, but I'm a percentage guy and David Ross far too many times this season. And it's not all the time. It's, but it's at a point where it's noticeable Mm -hmm. to where I feel that if you're within like 70 to 80% success is success rate with lineups and things like that, you're probably a pretty damn good manager. If you're within like the 60 to 55, you're probably being noticed. And David Ross probably falls dead in the middle of, of both of that. It's probably around like the 70 to, you know, the the lower end, 62, 60. You know what I mean? So just to I – thought, I thought you were going to say he was in like that 69th percent. Yeah, yeah, it would have been nice, right? But no, I just <laughs> – if it's noticeable for me and you, it's mm-hmm. noticeable for them. The problem then you have to answer is, does David Ross bring enough to the clubhouse to offset some of these mistakes? And yeah. sometimes I'd say yes. I'd, I'd mm-hmm. say in terms of being a player's manager, he he very much you know, will grow with veterans. He, he knows – you know, how to build an inside the clubhouse winning formula. I'm not doubting that. He's been on several, you know, World Series teams. He knows what a winning locker room looks like. But again, like you mentioned, when you don't have experience putting together lineups and knowing when to use the bullpen and knowing when to sneak an extra inning out of guys and when not to, you know, I thought last night was a perfect opportunity to sneak an extra inning out of Edward Alzelay. But then he went right to Fulmer, and then sure enough, that blows up in his face. It's things like that, and then today you come out, and some of it's not his fault. Some of it's injury, and some of it's, you know, these guys got to play. But today very much looks like a getaway day lineup, that you've already won the series, and if you you sweep, you sweep. If you don't, you don't. And that's a problem because you've lost series in a row. You know, (laughs) you've only won one series in May. And we're halfway through it. That's a problem. So a lot of this is is obviously I, I, I think that over a course of a long season, it evens out. Maybe this is some bad luck for Ross. But the alarms are starting to least go for me. And I'm the type that will give way more leeway than anybody else. I, sure. I very much have, have been patient with this. But two, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say it's all his fault because there is some problem with roster construction too. I wonder, and we haven't talked about this, I don't think at all on this show, what this team would have looked at looked like had they been able to sign Vasquez at, at, at the catcher position. Because it, I think going into that offseason, it was very rumored. Spicy. Yeah, it, it was rumored that he was a guy that they really liked. They made a really aggressive offer to. And now you're looking at one catcher, realistically, because Tucker Barnhart is just not – he's not working here. That's that's the that's the long and short of this. He doesn't hit. He doesn't do enough with the pitching staff to make you feel like he's, you know, calling a Worth great it. game. I wonder what this team would have looked at – looked like had they hit – on all their free agents, and, and it may be just one. Like, imagine that platoon situation of Vasquez and and uh, and Jan Gomes. That's that's you're set at the catcher position. You got two guys who call a great game, and you're not worrying about you know having to roll out Tucker Barnhart, which your record shows is not mm-hmm. successful. So, right. I don't want to like you know throw the fire on Ross without throwing some fire on Jed, but there's, there's not a lot of flexibility at this moment. I think it's going to get better because guys like Hendricks are going to come up and he's probably going to be your fifth starter. And I, 
I've heard nothing but good things from Cody Hoyer down AAA. So he's going to be another high leverage arm, and you can maybe push out a guy like Fulmer or Merriweather who's who's struggling, and, and, and fingers crossed on that as you cross him. But there's a lot of holes, and over the course of days in a row and series in a row, it's going to show. And as the season goes, this is why I sat here and said, pretty sure this is a 500 or maybe a tad below 500 ball club. And I don't know. I hate being right. These are the, th- I, I said it mm-hmm. in the opening show when we were talking about our season predictions. And I said, I just wish that I'm wrong, please. But this is a stretch of baseball that has kind of, it's proven my theory right, unfortunately. I, I kind of like this do- debate nonetheless, Juice. Just if nothing else from like a, a conversation standpoint, I think amongst Cubs Twitter is just like, what do you think of Ross? I think I think a lot of it, it truly is kind of the jury is up in the air. And I, I think a lot of that is because we have yet to see this guy with a competitive level lineup. He hasn't been atrocious to the point where we're like, what the hell is going on here? I don't know who's truly going to be available from a managerial standpoint going into the season yeah, next year the anyway, part. right? Like they're the only reason that Edgar, that Renteria lost his job is because Joe Madden became available. Let's call it is what it is, right? Like mm-hmm. that was purely luck that the Rays were like, eh, it's time to move on from Joe. And the Cubs were like, well, son of a bitch, we're ready to run. We want a guy like Joe with a young team. And it worked. I, I think that's what Ross I agree with what you had to say, Juice. I love what you had to say. I think from a clubhouse culture standpoint, Ross is top. Probably one of the best. He honestly, he's probably one of the best. Agreed. I because again, you saw it with the last year's team. Last year's team significantly less talented than this one and went above 500, you know, down the stretch for the last 90 games of the year. I mean, that that alone shows me this is the right guy in terms of clubhouse culture. 